Arms underneath the soles of my brand new parachute My name is Alan Lacey, and I'm a wildlife filmmaker, cameraman, and producer. Adventure with me as I explore the amazing world of nature and show you what it's like filming the wild. It's about a three and a half hour drive from where I live near Portland, Oregon, out to where the owls are on the Umatilla Army Chemical Weapons Depot. I'm headed out to the depot to meet up with our executive producer for our show. His name is Jim, to set up a couple blinds and get things ready so that we can start filming in the days to follow. It usually takes just a couple of days for the owls to get used to the blinds being there. So this is an important first step in order to get good natural behavior. This is also where world-renowned owl expert David H. Johnson has been studying them. David has been researching owls of all kinds for over 46 years and he is the founder and director of the Global Owl Project. He has over 400 scientists, biologists, researchers, and volunteers in 66 countries working to gain a better understanding of the importance and significance of owls. And this is Jim. He's an incredible photographer and a huge force for conservation. Right here, we are exploring a potential blind site with David. So for an evening light shot, it could yeah. work out pretty decent. Is that the, the main burrow? Is this one, David? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good spot. Once again, we have the We are looking for a site that gives good lighting in either the morning or evening, or ideally both, as the owls are most active at night. No, yeah. But they start to become active late in the evening, and it also goes all the way through into the early morning as well. We got five babies. And an egg. Yeah, they're still hatching. So five, four, five babies. Oh, shoot. Now you might be wondering what that round little bucket is, and what's it used for. Presently, there's a huge lack of natural burrows, a result of eradicating badgers years and years ago. So David designed an artificial burrow system which allows him to access the nest chamber to get accurate counts of eggs and then the owlets once they hatch. He can then determine hatch dates and then when he needs to come back and then ban the chicks. Alright, so Jim and I, we have got the blinds. We're going to be setting this stuff up so we can get out and film in a couple of weeks. That would have been all of our blind material. <laughs> Taking a corner. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna do get some work done here, put these up, and then in a few uh, weeks come back out film once the owls have acclimated and uh, get some of those beauty shots we're after. pieces together. Gonna set it up. Got that part run. Sweet. Nice. All right, next set. All right, we just crushed this. Put the spline together in no time flat. Probably what, 20 minutes? 20 minutes, maybe 17. <laughs> Got the owl sides right here, get some good stuff. Getting ready to shoot. Gonna be good days. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's see. <laughs> this is what we'll be spending our time in. With that view right out the window.
All right, so we're gonna head out and trap some owls today, this evening. Been out all day putting blinds up, but we're gonna head out, see if we can capture a couple of male rolling owls. So we'll see, wish us luck. Over his career, David has captured and banded thousands upon thousands of owls. And when it comes to burrowing owls in particular, he's banded at minimum at least 6,000 of them. Pretty mind-boggling to be honest if you ask me. As we head out to the sites to capture some of the owls, I'm reminded about how fragile an ecosystem can be if we don't take care of it. These owls once nearly disappeared from this region, but thanks to David's hard efforts, they are now a source population for burrowing owls all across the western United States. It goes to show how much one person can make a difference if they simply care and then do something about it. Put this trap, get it all set up and ready to go. Over the years, David has learned the best techniques to capture these owls is to use their instinctual behaviors. And so David's setting up his trap here, trying to catch the, is it the male and the female of this site? Or just the male? He has a near 100% success rate at capturing them. He first sets the trap near the burrow entrance, covering it up and then decorating it as if an intruder has been there. He puts an mp3 player behind the trap that plays the call of a weak two-year-old male, or a pesky intruder as David calls him, which really drives the male nuts. Enough so that he goes in after the quote-unquote intruder. So here's this other bird inside. It's not a dominant competitor, it's just a pesky intruder. Well, if it looks, if it sounds like there's somebody inside, it should look like there's somebody inside. So we put a little decor, some of his own decoration back out here. Get a little bit more. So this is AB 139. This is a nest site. We're trying to catch the male at this particular site. Start time is 2008. It's uh, May 23rd, 2020. Alright. Come back a little bit and hopefully we catch ourselves now. And bingo, we have ourselves a captured owl. Reach in, reach around their body, turn them upside down, so that way they can't drag with their feet. And then they're comfortable, they're comfortable, and we just bring them out. David takes the owls back to his truck so that he can do a full morphological workup. Or in other words, take detailed measurements from every unique feature of the owl. Part of the science and research he is doing is determining the exact measurements of these owls, which helps him in distinguishing the differences between other populations of burrowing owls across the Americas. His work here on the depot is being replicated elsewhere in Aruba, Venezuela, Brazil, Florida, and many other places these little guys reside. This all helps us better understand these owls so that we can make better decisions about how to conserve them moving forward. They are endangered in many places, threatened in others, and mostly declining due to human conflict and misunderstanding of why they are essential to the environment. All right, so here's the part we've all been waiting for actually filming these little guys. As you can see here, they were already up before I was. All right, it's way too early. It's uh, about 4.50 a.m. I am headed out to blind number one site. Hopefully we'll have some good luck there this morning. Um, I haven't had my coffee yet, so it's gonna be a morning. But I did bring it, so there we go. always been such a beautiful section of the drive. I don't know, I just absolutely love it. Alright, let's see what we get today. 
Man, this thing's a beast to carry, I'll tell you that much. It's probably like the tripod and the camera on it. No, it's probably got to be about a good 40 pounds, maybe. Maybe 50, about 40. It's insane though. Gorgeously beautiful today. All right, got everything set up. It's time to go in the blind. Fingers crossed we get some good action this morning. I woke up too early for this, so. And after a couple hours of waiting, these little guys finally decided to come out. And it's not just these two. More and more kept coming out. Until I was able to count seven youngsters. Now that's a lot of mouths to feed. And this is the adult male or dad. He uses his keen sense of hearing and eyesight to catch insects like this 10 line jude beetle, which he then feeds to his kids. The first one out gets the prize. <laughs> that is if it can figure out which way to eat its meal. or if he doesn't lose it. Spending days upon days with these little guys, you truly start to fall in love with them, their antics and their personalities. It takes a lot of practice to hone their skills at becoming adult burrowing owls, and it's a true joy to observe them from the distance of the blind. After a series of alarm calls from Dad, who was sensing danger nearby, the kids all scrambled back inside their burrow, their best defense against a potential predator, which also meant that was the end of my shoot. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. And if you would like to follow along on my next adventure, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. And last but not least, keep an eye out for my next video as I bring you another adventure of filming the wild.